Ulysses S. Grant led the Union Army to victory over the Confederacy during the American Civil War. So how did two Confederate generals end up being pallbearers at his funeral? On the surface, that may seem quite shocking, but following the defeat of the Confederacy in 1865, Grant was one of the most popular figures in the reunited nation. In 1868, three years after the war, Grant rode this popularity to become the President of the United States. In fact, at 46 years old, he was the youngest ever president at the time he was elected, and he went on to win re-election for a second term in 1872. Given his role in both defeating the Southern armies and overseeing the contentious Reconstruction period following the war, you'd probably think that Grant was an unpopular figure in the American South. However, after his death in 1885 at the age of 63 from cancer, the whole nation went into a state of mourning. On August 8, 1885, 1.5 million people attended Grant's funeral procession in New York City. According to PBS, the processional line behind Grant spanned seven miles and included President Grover Cleveland as well as the two living former presidents Rutherford B. Hayes and Chester A. Arthur. As historian Elizabeth D. Samet told the History Channel, I think something people tend to forget now is that Grant, at his death, was arguably the most famous American in the world. President Cleveland appointed the pallbearers for Grant's funeral. He selected William Tecumseh Sherman and Philip Sheridan, both Union generals during the Civil War, as well as Simon Bolivar Bunker and Joseph Johnston, two generals who had fought for the Confederacy. The reason for Sherman and Sheridan is clear, as both men had served and fought under Grant's command. But Buckner and Johnston had both fought against Grant and the Union. Ultimately, though, the two Confederate generals were chosen for a very simple reason, because Grant himself requested it. Above all else, Ulysses S. Grant wanted peace for the country. His slogan when running for president was, let us have peace, which was ultimately inscribed on his tomb. According to the Foreign Policy Research Institute, Grant requested an equal number of Union and Confederate pallbearers at his funeral, echoing his longing for unity. As for the men chosen to fill that honored role, Simon Bolivar Buckner was actually friends with Grant. According to American History Central, their friendship predated the war. In fact, they were such good friends that Grant went to Buckner when he was struggling financially, and Buckner arranged a place for him to stay until he got back up on his feet. Their friendship was tested during the war, and when Grant seized the town of Paducah, Kentucky, Buckner accepted the task of becoming Brigadier General for the Confederates in 1861. In the end, however, Buckner surrendered to Grant on February 16, 1862. As for Joseph Johnston, it seems Grant had a certain amount of respect for him. William Tecumseh Sherman wrote in his memoirs that Grant said that Johnston was nearly the only Confederate general that he actually feared. The whole funeral procession was an attempt to honor a man who had the legacy of not just defeating the Confederacy, but also preserving and reuniting the United States. With that in mind, President Cleveland promoted the theme of unity for the funeral with his choice of pallbearers. Just 20 years earlier, these same men would have been leading armies against each other. Now they were all in New York paying tribute to one of the men most responsible for ending that conflict. The day of the funeral was seen as both a celebration of Grant's life and accomplishments, as well as a final end to the difficult Civil War and Reconstruction eras. According to BBS, on top of the generals selected to be pallbearers, officers from both the Union and Confederacy rode together in carriages during the procession. This grand display of unity was a great way to honor Grant by thanking him for his service toward reuniting the country and showing proof that his efforts toward peace had succeeded.